Welcome to this episode of Talking Point. I am your host, Niaz Ahmed. Today in our studios, we have Councillor Anmesh Desai from Neham Council. He has been a councillor since 1998. He has worked also as Deputy Mayor for uh, six months and presently he is a member of the Cabinet. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And it's nice to be here. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, councillor Desai, uh, you have been a Deputy Mayor for six months and what are your responsibilities presently? Uh, currently, I'm the Mayor of Newham, Sir Robin Wilson's Cabinet Member mm -hmm. for Crime and Antisocial Behaviour, mm -hmm. uh, which includes uh, uh, small-scale antisocial behaviour, relationships with the police, general criminal matters, uh, anything that affects the safety of the citizens of mm -hmm. Newham. What they call law and order situation. A law and order, but from a council perspective. Right. Um, I mean, there are certain things, obviously, that are the responsibility of the police. Uh, right. Serious crime, uh, right. burglaries, uh, robberies, to give some examples. But there's also the low-level antisocial behavior, uh, yeah. gangs of kids hanging around street corners, uh, creating a, a nuisance for neighbors, right. noise nuisance, late-night parties, right. things that affect the day-to-day the -day sort of quality of life for our citizens. Yeah. So it's basically framing council uh, strategies yeah. Working with the police and with other partners, we, to develop we, we a, have a plenty of that in 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 uh, inner London, isn't it? But we'll talk about that later. Indeed. The law and order situation and uh, what is the job of the mayor's cabinet? Well, we have elected mayor in Newham. Uh, mm -hmm. One of uh, how many mayors? Uh, there are four elected mayors in London, mm -hmm. uh, and Sir Robin Wills has been the mayor since uh, 2002. Mm -hmm. um, he's elected directly by the people of Newham. Right. Yeah. So, although he stood as a Labour candidate, uh, selected by the Labour Party, uh, it's the people of Newham who decide whether to have him or another candidate. Right. Uh, at the last election in 2010, he was elected with something like 68% of the popular vote, right. uh, which I hope is a reflection uh, of, of, of the job that we're doing and of his popularity and uh, of the job that he and the administration are doing. Uh, there are, uh, by law, he's meant to have a certain number of people in his cabinet. I'm one of the cabinet members. There's also executive executive. How many um, councillors do you have in Newham? We have 60 councillors. 60 councillors. And then the mayor himself. Mm -hmm. But all councillors are not members of the cabinet? No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, nine me there are nine executive members mm -hmm. uh, and then we have what is also called scrutiny, people who scrutinize us to mm -hmm. see what our performance is like. Uh, there are three scrutiny chairs uh, and then there are uh, other members who uh, make up the scrutiny commissions uh, and also play an important part in uh, community life by being community lead members. Right. So Newham has nine community forums, mm -hmm. uh, which is we are bringing the council closer to people in the communities. Uh, each community forum has a lead member, yeah. a committee lead member. Uh, so it's part of being a team. One person alone cannot deliver. It's advising sure, sure. the mayor working to implement his policies uh, and we were elected as a Labour Party, so the Labour Party's policies. Uh, so the, the, the mayor's cabinet Newham. is on a smaller scale like the cabinet? Like the central cabinet, yeah. Right. yeah. And uh, they, they are responsible, different committees are responsible for different... Uh, different different uh, aspects of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of new life. Uh, finance and resources, mm -hmm. children and young people services, uh, then Education. Moment, uh, and so on, yeah. Education and, and r roads and highways. Indeed, and indeed. 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 Uh, that's very good. Uh, Newham, uh, you are also members of different committees like uh, uh, Liaison Committee, Newham Partnership on Crime and Disorder, as you said, Newham Partnership Board, uh, Public Transport, a Strategic Development Committee, and London Council's Crime and Public uh, Protection Forum transport, environment, etc. So you, you must be leading a very busy life. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, it's a portfolio which has a very wide remit. Right. Uh, and if you come into public life, into public service, uh, it's the more that you do, uh, uh, it's about actually, you know, achieving your, uh, your full potential, but the expectations that people have of you. Mm -hmm. So one can spend time in endless committee meetings. But what is important is what's the end result? Does it actually change? the quality of life for people, right. what your actions, Is your policies, your programs, actions? your work, 
how much does it actually change things out there on the streets, in the communities? That's right. the real test. Yeah. So yes, I sit on a number of committees, yeah. but because it's, because it's essential to carry out my portfolio right. in its fullest sort of remit that, that I sit on all these various bodies. Right. Uh, some of the bodies are not relate, related directly to my work. The Strategic uh -huh. Development Committee is right. like a super planning committee. Right. We deal with the big issues, the development of the docks, city airports, expansion plans, mm -hmm. um, well, major sort of planning applications. Uh, so it's a chance for me to make an input into the mayor's administration from a, from a platform that extends beyond my crime and antisocial uh, portfolio. Um, so you know, it, uh, as I said, the, uh, the strategic the word strategic itself implies mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. that particular committee does. It takes a broad sort of view of how right. new economy uh, and planning can sort of develop in tandem. Is the elected mayor? Is he like an executive mayor or is he... Uh, a, a Absolutely, a he's executive, an mm -hmm. American style, executive mayor with executive functions, uh, elected directly by the, by the, by the people of uh, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like the old ceremonial uh, mayor uh, who perform an important role, uh, I'm not uh, denying that, mm -hmm. but their role is more of a civic sort of uh, role. Um, whereas uh, going on with the uh, with change, uh, whereas the political leadership uh, rests uh, in those councils with the leader of the council, uh, elected by the uh, mm -hmm. majority party, uh, the executive mayor was a rule specifically created under the Blair government. Uh, but of course, um, uh, Tony Blair didn't impose it on people. There were referendums in a number of areas, mm -hmm. including Tower Hamlets, Hackney, uh, Lewisham, where people opted the, uh, to go for a direct elected mayor. In many cases, uh, in towns up and down the country, many towns rejected the concept of a mayor. Right. Uh, the idea behind the mayoral system was that people could identify with uh, one individual uh, who they could see as carrying out uh, uh, things that the that were promised right. for good or for, for better or for worse, and mm -hmm. then make a judgment on that uh, person's uh, performance. But they still have ceremonial mayors and the executive mayors. In, in, in the some boroughs they have. In New York we decided, mm -hmm. for many reasons, uh, not least um, um, uh, uh, the, the financial aspects, um, that uh, we did not need a ceremonial mayor when we had an executive mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I mean, it's been a long-standing tradition. Uh, we've had many good ceremonial mayors. Uh, all the ceremonial mayors that I know uh, did the job to the best of their ability. Right. But a time came when we as... But they didn't uh, have the power, the leader of the council they did the had power. the power. And, and so we had to ask, you know, local government changes. Nothing in public life or in life is static. You got to change with the times. You, you have a certain pol political philosophy. You have a certain idea of society, of, of vision of life. Uh, but then you adapt according to realities. And we felt that a, situa a time had come when the, the role of the ceremonial mayor uh, had actually sort of uh, changed to an extent where we had to question its viability. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, you also always got to bear in mind uh, the cost of the public purse. Uh, the executive mayor had a deputy, f the full-time deputy executive mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a number of other members of the administration carrying out a number of roles. Right. So we, we abolished the, 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 the role of civic ambassador, as we called it. Right. Uh, but uh, the point that with all this paraphernalia and all these ceremonial officers and executive officers, how do ordinary people get involved in the business of the council? How, wh where do they go? Which no doors they knock? Well, I think that's one of the great strengths of our, of our, of our democracy, as I said. Uh, the first door to knock is mm -hmm. your local councillor's door. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what position you hold in public life, at the end of the day, I'm the councillor for East Town Central. Uh, I'm accountable to the people, not just the people who elected me, but the people who live in Istanbul Central. In that, uh, uh, I hold regular yes. surgeries. Right. That's the first door to knock. Although, of course, uh, in the modern world with emails and uh, Twitters and, uh, and all the different social media outlets, right. there are other ways that people communicate. A lot of my casework now mm -hmm. is done via email. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that it's important that, that, that uh, people uh, who elected me, and indeed people from uh, all over the borough who maybe should see me, know that where I am at a certain Mm -hmm. time on a certain day mm -hmm. uh, and can come and see me. I think that's the best form of democracy, direct contact with the elected representative. The mayor himself does regular question times, which are well advertised. 
uh, where people can come and ask questions on a variety of issues, and they do. That's how uh, that uh, and sometimes, you know, very vociferously, uh, and sometimes on questions that, that, that you know, uh, we may, you know, uh, we have to give straight answers, um, no matter, you know, how problematic the issues are. Uh, the mayor uh, also has his cabinet in open. Um, uh, there are mayoral proceedings which are uh, open and advertised on the internet. Uh, the full council, people can present petitions to the mayor. Uh, they've got the capacity to ask questions, which the mayor always answers. Uh, are um, these questions... Uh, directly addressed to the mayor? No, no, no. Are these questions filed in beforehand? Or? Oh, yeah, there are rules, you know, uh, statutory rules. Uh, you've got to, uh, got to give three days notice. Quite simply because it's got to be printed on the agenda. Uh, offices have got uh, to research. It's the like Prime Minister's question. Uh, uh, indeed, indeed. Um, but uh, uh, the scope is there in public, complete, uh, you know, complete transparency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a number of ways. And of course, writing to the mayor, writing to your councillors, uh, using the letters page of the local newspaper. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, there's also citizens' power. I mean, you know, by becoming involved in school governing bodies, uh, which I would urge, you know, all our communities to do. We need more school governors. We need more magistrates from, uh, uh, from all communities, but particularly from ethnic minority communities. Uh, so democracy is more than just people being elected as councillors and MPs. It's mm -hmm. about how we all see our role in society right. and use various platforms to achieve what we hope what we all want a better world what is the demographic structure of Newham and particularly your ward Newham East Central well Newham just like the East End uh, um, you know has changed over the years and will keep on changing mm -hmm. um, uh, the demographic today is very heavily uh, uh, British ethnic minority orientated uh, mm -hmm. growing East European community mm -hmm. um, uh, we still have a large white working class um, indigenous uh, community, about 30% of Neum is uh, indigenous based. Um, uh, of the 60-70% I think minority communities, mm -hmm. the majority of people f uh, still from the <coughs> Indian subcontinent, India, right. Pakistan, Bangladesh right. uh, and British East African Asians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean I personally, my parents came from East Africa, right. although I'm Indian by origin. I was born in East Africa, um, but as I say, increasing number of, uh, of East Europeans, a growing African community. Uh, and uh, I see that as part of the metamorphosis of the East End, uh, you know, evolving society, evolving sort of community. But this is homogeneous, isn't it? Uh, and indeed, and that I think is, is the major challenge for those of, especially for those of us who elected mm -hmm. uh, as councillors, as MPs, how we keep uh, the, the unity of our communities together. Yes, we have different cultures. Yes, sure. we have different faiths mm -hmm. or no faiths or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have different uh, you know, aspirations. Languages. But it is what unite different languages, different backgrounds. But what we have, I believe that we have more in common than what divides us. Right. We all want a better education system. We all want our children to, 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 to do better, better than housing, us. Living we want better housing, better streets. Better neighbors. Better neighbors, uh, less crime. So what unites, we have, as I say, we have more in common than what divides us. And it's finding that unity uh, no matter what background that we come from, a civic unity, a political unity, uh, that I think is a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge that I think uh, we've got to live up to as politicians. There are extremists of all types, in, you know, from going back to Muslim states in the yes. 1930s yes. and yes. the British Union of Fascists marching right. into the East End against yes. the Jewish community, oh, who will seek to, 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 to divide us um, uh, you know, around uh, sort of use uh, populist slogans, uh, uh, put blame on, on migrant new, uh, newly arrived communities for economic yeah, problems yeah, which are of a very yeah, deep yeah. and fundamental nature. Right. We've got to rise above that and then by leadership, by example, show that we are more in common. It's only by working together that we will all, all prosper. Well, thank you, Councillor Desai. Uh, uh, this is the point where we will take a break. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about more about uh, uh, Neham Council, uh, the problems that people have in education and housing and uh, as I said, law and order situation. And uh, this is the beauty of democracy, that people can express their ideas. And uh, you can differ, but they have a right to express their ideas. And it? long may that be the case. And that's what we hope. It remains like that. And we'll take a break, uh, viewers, at this time. And we want you not to go away. Come back and see you. अपनारा देखें टकिंग पॉइंट